So I teach food writing and a food studies class that is for um, future middle and elementary school teachers. And so that food studies class is very interdisciplinary, but focuses both on food cultures, where the students themselves come from with food, as well as, you know, other cultural experiences with food, which leads us into talking about different systems of production. In the food writing class, we also talk about different systems of production, particularly when we're looking at more literary journalism, like um, Michael Pollan's The Omnivore's Dilemma and things like that. And so um, we go on these field trips in part to see those different systems of production, particularly in um, poultry production. So one of the main reasons that I take students on um, field trips, the one to Mike Weaver's farm in West Virginia, um, where he grows uh, chicken for the Pilgrim's Pride Corporation, and then to Polyface Farms, which is a farm whose values are built around sustainable agriculture in Swope, Virginia, is because for quite some time now, there's been quite a separation between the food on our plate or the foods we buy in the store and its source, where it comes from. And there's such a separation between human beings consuming that food and how it was made. And so one of the goals of the field trips is to really collapse that, dif that, that distance um, and let, you know, all of us there together, me, the students, and, you know, sometimes parents join us, sometimes friends join us to have that opportunity to actually get a clearer and up close picture of how that food gets on their plates. Mm -hmm. I guess I've never really been to like, a lot of farms, so in my head I had like old McDonald's, like that old thing. <laughs> I thought I was going to see a ton of animals and everything. I'd never been in a chicken shed, so um, I had no idea what that was going to be like. Um, I've always been really passionate about um, food systems in America and food systems all over the world, and so given the opportunity to go to a conventional chicken operation, I was like, Heck yeah, let's do this. After hearing about it and seeing it on documentaries and like seeing like the horror um, and the injustice, I just really wanted to go check it out. Well, when we first got there, I was really excited. Um, I just like, love nature and we got there early in the morning. So, um, you know, the birds were chirping, which is like a great feeling of being outside. And um, as you took us around the farm, it was really nice. There was these horses that were like following us around and just like they were so cute. Up. When we went to the chicken house, it was a completely different experience than other things that we were experiencing throughout the morning. It was very removed from nature, I would say, just because it was so artificial with the chemical smells and everything like that, and it just didn't seem like a natural way to raise chickens at all. So I was kind of shocked by that, but I definitely had prepared myself for it. But once we went into the chicken house, it was just overwhelming smell of ammonia, and I had a mask on, but it still didn't really do that much. It still was really overwhelming, and so... Uh, we had to deal with that and just like to see the conditions that the chickens were in was like a little depressing just because um, they were so young and they were just like all cramped together. And then as soon as you walked into the to the um, chicken house, 
you're just hit with this like really abrasive odor um, that kind of burned just any available orifice on your face and just you, you just like knew right then that this is not a place where life should be yeah and um i knew we were going to like a conventional like industrial type farm so mm -hmm. i knew it was going to be somewhat bad but like when we went to the chicken shed i did not expect that smell to be that bad and it was that like was almost initial. unbearable like yeah. it was so bad i love the trip i thought it was great but i would not want to go relive that mm -hmm. I know that he just talked about he's trying to be the voice and trying to get um, the idea out there that it's not the best way and um, speaking out whereas other farmers they might be too scared or like their jobs depend on their farming life but he's stable enough that he can maintain himself. He's kind of an activist within the system that he is so against this practice but still takes part in it. I was most struck when Mike when, when I asked Mike um, if he eats his own chicken and he was like yes there's nothing wrong with this meat. And I was like, well, you just spent like an hour telling us what's wrong with the meat. Like, what's wrong with the system? What's wrong with the government? What's wrong with the corporation? What's wrong with the feed? How you don't know what's in it? If you don't know what's going into your chicken, then you don't know what's going into yourself. And I also thought um, it was interesting how like, he doesn't even know where the chickens come from themselves. I feel like it's not right because he's the farmer. He's taking care of the chickens. I he know. should know where his chickens are coming from, along with the food that they eat. Polyface was like obviously not conventional and so I wanted to kind of see the difference and in class we had like read Omnivore's Dilemma, we had seen movies and then I'd heard Professor Cavanaugh talk about Joel Salatin a lot so it like just piqued my interest and I definitely wanted to go check it out. I was really interested in seeing the difference between the two farms because I've heard Polyface is just a lot better in how he runs the farm. Oh, I wanted to like go out there and I wanted to see for myself firsthand what it was all about. I just wanted to feel like there was hope in the farming industry and that everything wasn't so industrialized and just um, so based on profit. And I definitely got that when I went to Wally Face Farms. Yes, I wanted to see what Erica had to say. Um, so I really respect her um, as a teacher and educator. So I kind of wanted to see her perspective on things. And I just wanted to go back. Um, farms change very frequently. There are just animals moving around all the time, new things growing, seasons make farms just look completely different and so I just wanted a chance to go again and just see the changes that have been happening. I really like the way that Joel Salton has everything set up and I really liked his transparency. We were able to just walk through the um, fields where the chickens were, we went where all the pigs were and actually like were playing with the pigs. So I thought that was really cool that he's just so open about it. He really cared about his animals. I mean, the animals, everything he did was designed with the animals in mind. He had special feeders for the pigs, you know, where they could lift their nose up because they that's what they like to do, is like in their nature. And um, he moved them around, they weren't cramped out. It just seemed like he was really committed to uh, putting things the way that they're supposed to be like, in nature and just kind of playing off of nature and like what was best. That Joel Salton is a grass farmer because grass is where everything starts. It comes from the ground up. They're like the animals eat that, take it, takes that into, into themselves, then we eat the meat, etc. I was just interested in, in the grass, especially with its, its springtime. We have that new, new spring of fresh grass coming up. It was interesting to like look at the grass and how like green it was and how um, it was kind of discussed as like a salad bar for the cows. And it was cool to see how he moves his animals, like the pigs, and he moves the cows um, so they don't like in their grass. I'd heard about the idea of um, the second bite where mm -hmm. they have all the cows in one field and then they allow them to like eat down on the grass only enough to get one bite and move them before they can take their second bite so it helps the grass like the sun hit the grass roots so it helps it grow. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. I really like um, Joe Salatin's farm but I wish it was more like a accessible 
to like everyone like it is a far way to drive and get his meat. I wish it was, I don't know, available to more people, I guess. I think just being able to like walk around and actually go into the yeah. fields. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought that was cool because I was not expecting that. Yeah. Yeah, the transparency was awesome, like how he allowed us to interact with even the animals themselves. Mm -hmm. it, there was no like secrets or hidden agendas and overall the farm was just like beautiful. Yeah. And the dog, his dog like <laughs> yes. on a private tour. He was, Can't forget that. He was so cute. Hi baby. <laughs> the biggest like difference I noticed was how much just fresher the air was. Mm -hmm. It just felt cleaner. Also everything was just brighter. Like the grass was green and the I don't know, the livestock just seemed so much more happy or like lively. I actually expected the chickens to be um, like out of cages and like walking around, but he had the um, chickens raised for food in cages, mm -hmm. but it was so much different than the other farm because they were still outside um, in the fresh air and they could see the sunlight, unlike Mike Beaver's farm. And um, I learned how they're in cages because of predators to protect them. You got to interact with the animals more, which is not something that you got to do at Mike Weaver's farm at all, really. So it was definitely a lot better. Sometimes I'm asked why I teach food studies, and it's, it's a great way to, I mean, food is this great metaphor. I mean, it's both something real and it's a great metaphor for talking about labor, for talking about health, for talking about the environment, for even talking about one's own identity and how food is attached to that. And the interconnections between all of these things that no one piece, the labor or the identity or anything like that is isolated. Um, but, uh, but they're interconnected, and I think food helps us see those interconnections. The main thing that I'm, that I'm hoping for is for, you know, any of us as observers not to take things for granted, whether that's our food or the labor that goes into making that food, to essentially just encourage more thoughtfulness and more curiosity. I would be lying if I didn't say that I hope that to the degree that one can, depending on their income, that one would make more thoughtful choices about their food. And um, the reason for that is honestly that I want for students as well as for the labor that produces the food, um, I want them to have better health and for our environment to be um, better care for, cared for. And so I am trying to foster better stewards of the earth. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that being a better steward of the earth actually does relate to personal and communal health. Um, and I try to, you know, let people come to that on their own based on their own experiences. I would say changed would be the right word. I would say enhanced. So my knowledge is enhanced. Um, kind of like the punch behind my activism is enhanced. Because I've always been really passionate about food activism and uh, like the local food movement and just knowing where your food comes from and being able to respect and honor the systems that are in place that are feeding you. So I would say that everything that I saw at Mike's Farm, everything that I saw at Polyface kind of reinforced all of my beliefs in locally grown, well-fed, sustainably raised, you know, happy creatures and plants. Well, going into uh, Mike's farm, it was kind of a wake-up call. You don't, at least for me, I never really took a lot of stock into thinking about where my food came from. You know, I just buy bags of chickens at the store and I don't ever, like, think twice about, you know, their life they had before, really, or the workers' life that raised them, and so definitely that was kind of a wake-up call. And you know, after that, I actually started you know paying a little bit more attention to my labels when I go out and I buy food. You know, trying to get something that's you know maybe more organic or chickens that um, seem to have been treated better. So that definitely changed me in that way, and just kind of having me think more that it's not just like me going to the grocery store. There's like so much other things that go behind it. It's definitely made me want to eat healthier or try like to eat more um, grass-fed beef. I have never really tried it. I just buy meat from the grocery store. So it's definitely changed my outlook on that. Yeah, it makes me like cautious, like when I go to the, 
the grocery store, like what foods I choose and looking at labels, looking at if it's grass fed. I feel like I've learned a lot. Going into Polyface just kind of, like I said, it kind of gave me hope. Like it made me feel so much better about, you know, eating chicken and other types of meats in America in this day and age, where as after Mike's, I was kind of feeling like, you know, maybe I wanted to go vegetarian. There is a right way to do it and that there's people out there that are doing things right and that um, hopefully at some point people will catch on and it will kind of become more of a movement. And so it just kind of gave me hope for the future that maybe it won't always be like industrial chicken farming and that at some point, someday, it might all be like polyface farms. Going on, I would just encourage people that if given the chance to go see where your, where, where your food comes from, go. It's to be part of your food system. Um, if you can even grow something or like even like just plant a tomato plant, buy one from the farmer's market, plant some basil. I would just encourage people to go on those field trips, talk to teachers that, that, that know more than you do. That's why we're at school. And just plant some things, eat some good food, because the difference is insane.